Se le va a caer si que no estuviera en los hombros. No, it's okay. Well, it is time to get started with our last lesson for today. Save the best for the last. Uh, we're going to have Brother Kevin Smith speak for us. And I'm glad you were able to come today and speak. Kevin, actually, I, I, I had a couple of lessons. I think, actually, I think it was the one I just preached and maybe this one that you're going to do. Uh, Kevin tenía varias lecciones que iba a predicar y ese que va a hacer. And I gave, I gave him the choice of them, and he picked the one he's going to do. And I, I was telling my daughter just the other day or so back that I understand why. This is a wonderful text there in Colossians chapter 3. Le la opción de este, tomar esta lección, y esta es la que escogió, que es una muy buena opción aquí en Colosenses 3. Seek those things above. Busca esas cosas de arriba. And what a wonderful thought. Qué hermoso pensamiento. I do want to mention again, we do have the books available. We have this year's and then the last two years. My helper here was nice of her own self to design these little sheets with pictures of the books and, and all. And we also have a QR code on here that uh, points to uh, bookpatch.com where you can get any of these books and we also have some of our older books we're adding on to there that aren't we don't have them available here but they are available online okay. uh, Olivia diseñó unas páginas que tienen los libros ahí y tienen un este, código QR así que ustedes van con el celular y agarran, agarran el código y los lleva a un lugar que se llama Bookpatch donde pueden encontrar los libros de, de este tiempo y los pasados que están añadiendo We've gotten a couple of them, our 2011 on marriage and our 2013 on First Corinthians. Tiene el del año 2011 on, este, en el matrimonio y uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, and what? 2011 and 2013. And what is the uh, 2013? On First Corinthians. En y el del 2013 en Primera Corintios. We are going to get 2012, but when I started going through these and adding them, putting them in, in this format. We've run into a problem with that. Uh, I've got the hard copy of the book, but unfortunately I can't find about half of the, uh, I can't find the uh, electronic format. So I'm going to have to go back in and manually type it in because yeah, it's going to be fun. That's fun. Iba a añadir el año 2012, pero tuvo problemas de formato. Así que va a ir a añadirlo después. We're going to ask uh, Brother Zerk Hasnon to lead us in a song. Va a ir a su mano a dirigirnos en una canción. We'll ask Brother Dennis if he will to lead us in an opening prayer. Hermano Dennis va a dirigirnos en una oración. And Kevin, I've been telling everybody to finish by a quarter till. And I showed it can't be done. Yeah, I showed <laughs> Nuestro hermano Kevin le pidió que terminara a tiempo y nuestro hermano nos enseñó que sí se puede hacer, pero that was an exception. I am, <laughs> yeah. I am exceptional, what can I say? Uh, but Kevin, as you're the last one, you just go until you decide you're you're done, and even if it's till midnight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bueno, voy a predicar hasta las 12 de la noche. I, I, had, Red Bull. Yeah, I had a Red Bull, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But if you fall out of the window or something, I, I'm not able to help you out. Uh, Brother Dennis. Let us pray. Also, Robert. Heavenly Father, we come to thank you for the blessing of this day we've been able to share together. Padre Celestial, venimos para darte gracias por la bendición de este día que hemos compartido en, esta, en este tiempo. We're thankful for the brethren that have already spoken for the, for the wonderful lessons they gave us. Te damos gracias por los hermanos que ya han hablado y las lecciones que nos han uh, dado. And we just pray that we'll just grow in our appreciation for what 
you have done for us through Jesus Christ. Oramos, Padre, para que uh, crezcamos en, uh, en apreciar por todo lo que Cristo Jesús ha hecho. And now we pray that you'll be with Kevin as he gets ready to uh, bring us a lesson. Ya oramos por hermano Kevin uh, que está preparando para venir a traer esta lección. That, is, that he will get across the points that he has prepared for us. Para que pueda traer este, esos puntos que, que ha preparado. We thank you again for Jesus. We're grateful for the sacrifice that he was willingly made on that cross for us. Damos gracias de nuevo por Jesús y por ese sacrificio voluntario que él hizo en la cruz por nosotros. And be with us now, and in Jesus' name we pray. Sé con nosotros y en el nombre de Cristo oramos. Amen. 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 Un momento, hermano. My helper pointed out that I actually never told, introduced Kevin, so I'll kind of give a little introduction to Kevin. Um, you might have to help me here, Kevin, but uh, Kevin is uh, currently serving the church here in, at Lincoln. Hermano Kevin predica por la, por la congregación en Lincoln. And how long have you been there now, Kevin? February the 70th. Has it been that long? Desde febrero van a ser siete años que ha estado ahí. I didn't realize it was that long. And of course, his his wife, Sister Smith, I don't know your first name. Tina. 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 Tammy, Tammy. Oh, Tammy, okay. All right. Tammy. Tammy. I'm just translating what you're saying. Okay. And uh, I know you guys have at least one son. One son. Who I had one brother, and I don't know if he'd want me to say who he was, but uh, apparently knows your son and says he is a very good preacher himself. And spoke very highly of him, which, which speaks volumes of you two. So we're going to turn it over to Brother Zare. Mark your book to end. 629 for invitation song 629 83 en español número de invitación what thing is the game it's 629 okay if you got it uh 359 359 in english 25 en español. Three fifty nine. Veinticinco en español. Okay. Meditar en que hay un hogar en la margen del río de luz. Donde van para siempre a gozar los creyentes en Cristo Jesús. Más allá, más allá, meditad en que hay un hogar. Más allá, más allá, más allá. En la margen del río de luz, meditad en que amigos tenéis, de los cuales marchamos en pos, y pensad en que al fin los veréis en el alto palacio de Dios. Más allá, más allá, meditad en que amigos tenéis. Más allá, más allá, más allá, de los cuales marchamos en pos. En que mora Jesús meditar, donde seres que amamos están, y a la patria bendita volar, sin angustias, temores ni afán.
Masayang, 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 en que mora Jesús medita. Más allá, más allá, más allá, donde seres que amamos están, reunido a los míos seré, mi carrera su fin toca ya, y en mi hogar celestial entraré. Do mi alma reposo tendrá más allá, más allá, reunido a los míos seré, más allá, más allá, más allá, mi carrera su fin toca ya. Well, I want to start by saying that it's really great to be with you here today. I want to thank Brother Jones and the congregation here at Sedalia for hosting the lectureship and working to spread the gospel, not only just among the brethren, but throughout the community. Para trabajar tanto, arduamente, no solamente en estas lecturas, para uh, uh, de una manera predicar el Evangelio, no solamente aquí en la comunidad, pero en todos lados. I know you've had several great lessons already, but you know, anytime we can speak from the Word of God, it's a great lesson. Yo sé que ya hemos tenido buenas lecciones, pero cada vez que hablamos de la Palabra de Dios, es una buena lección. I do want to tell you that this is kind of a first for me. Out of all the years that I've preached the gospel, this is the first time, other than having someone translate in sign language, someone translating into another language for me. I appreciate Brother Christian being able to do this, and uh, hopefully I won't make you stumble too much through things. I told him to just nudge me if, if I get out of line. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've actually done something completely different than I've ever done before, because normally I just do an outline and I talk. Eh, voy a hacer algo totalmente diferente a lo que he hecho anteriormente, porque usualmente solo utilizo un, bo un bosquejo y hablo. And if, if, uh, if I stumble a little bit here, it's because I've actually written out a lesson, and I never do that. So now I've got to try to learn how to focus on a lesson while I'm trying to get out my points. <laughs> Me tropiezo un poco en mis palabras, es porque ahora necesito una lección Y quiero seguir esta lección, uh, usualmente utilizo un bosquejo, pero lo hice solamente para esta, este tiempo. I was reminded when Brother Robert had uh, said that he left out a part in the book, uh, left out the actual book and chapter, and said that we needed to find all of verse 18. <laughs> uh, me recordé cuando el hermano uh, Robert dijo que uh, no puso libro capítulo versículo en alguna sección, así que dijo que debíamos encontrar todos los versículos 18 a través de la Biblia. Reminded me of a story of uh, one of our well-known old-time gospel preachers, Brother Marshall Keeble. Recordó la historia de uno de los predicadores de nuestro tiempo, que era muy famoso, que se llamaba Marshall Keeble. Brother Keeble had said one time that people would say to him, that's what's wrong with Keeble, you don't tell us every verse. Brother Keeble would say, 
It's in there. You need to do some work. Go find it. Robert, we could have found it if we would have done the work. <laughs> Seek those things which are above. Our text is Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. Paul says, Seek those things which are above. We are to seek a home with our Father, with the Son and the Spirit, to be with them throughout eternity. Paul was a prisoner at the time of writing this letter. He had been placed under arrest some years prior. Pablo era un prisionero al tiempo que escribió esta carta. While in Jerusalem, Jews had falsely accused him of taking Gentiles into the temple. During an uproar in the city, the Roman soldiers had taken Paul. After finding out that Paul was a Roman citizen and there was a plot to kill him, he was then taken to Caesarea. He stood before Felix and then later he stood before Festus. And then at that time, Paul had appealed to Caesar to be tried before him. He also stood before King Agrippa. He told Agrippa about his conversion. And Agrippa replied with the sad words, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian, Acts chapter 26 and verse 28. Al cristianismo que podemos encontrar en la Biblia. Paul was taken to Rome. Pablo fue llevado a Roma. It was the result of a very dangerous and treacherous trip across the sea. Fue uh, el resultado de un viaje muy largo y uh, dificultoso a través del mar. But he finally arrives at Rome some years later, but his accusers are nowhere to be found. Después llega a Roma después de un tiempo, pero los acusadores no estaban por ningún lado. He is placed under house arrest for two years. Y él estaba uh, en un arresto por un tiempo. But Paul was still able to preach both in the prison area and in the outer courts around the people. Pero Pablo todavía podía predicar en la prisión y afuera de la corte por algunos lugares. He tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 22 that there were Christians of the household of Caesar. And while Paul was in prison, he met a runaway slave by the name of Onesimus. Onesimus is from Colossae. He's converted to Christianity and maybe even directly by Paul. Paul writes a letter to his owner Philemon. Philemon and his family are Christians, and the church apparently meets in his home. Paul addressed Philemon as a brother in Christ, and he tells Philemon to accept Onesimus as a brother in Christ. Pablo le escribe a Filemón diciéndole que él era un hermano en Cristo y le pedía que recibiera a Onesimus como un hermano en Cristo. Paul also meets another individual while he's in prison by the name of Epaphras. También Pablo encuentra a un individuo llamado Epaphras. Epaphras is called a minister to the church at Colossae. I believe this is why Paul found out about the church meeting at Colossae. 
And our text is taken from the third chapter, first verse of this letter that Paul wrote to the church at Colossae. The first verse reads, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. It's a command for us today as well to seek those things which are above. If you look at the continuation that Paul writes in verses 2 through 4, he says, Set affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid, in, with, uh, hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Poned la mira en las cosas de arriba, no en las de la tierra, porque habéis muerto. Y vuestra vida está escondida con Cristo en Dios. Cuando Cristo, vuestra vida, se manifieste, entonces vosotros también seréis manifestados con Él en gloria. We are to have our minds centered on Christ in obedience to Him. Debemos de tener nuestras mentes enfocadas en Cristo en obediencia a Él. We're changed from the way of the world, and Peter explains the change that we go through as we become Christians. Nosotros hemos cambiado del camino al mundo, y Pablo explica este cambio que debemos de tener como cristianos. First Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, Peter says that there's a change that the world does not understand. Primero de Pedro, capítulo 4, versículo 1 al 4, nos dice que hay una oportunidad o tal una posibilidad que el mundo no entienda qué significa esto. And in verse 4, he says, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Y el versículo 4 dice que a esto les parece cosa extraña, que vosotros no corráis con ellos en el mismo desenfreno de distrucción y os ultrajen. Paul also gives a list of things we must remove from our lives as Christians in Colossians 3, 5 through 9. Pablo también nos dice algunas cosas que debemos de remover de nuestra vida como cristianos en Colosenses 3, uh, 2 a 9. He says we have to remove fornication or harlotry or adultery, incest. Debemos de remover aquellas cosas como uh, adulterio, uh, incesto y muchas otras cosas más. Uncleanness or impurities. Cosas que son este, impurezas en nuestra vida. Inordinate affections, touching of lust. Malos deseos y pasiones desordenadas. Evil concupiscence, worthlessness or wickedness. Avaricia, que es idolatría. Covetousness, which he says is idolatry or extortion. Idolatría y extorsión. Anger, wrath, indignation. Uh, desobediencia, ira. And then he names wrath, but... The translation might lend itself to be the, the passion to anger. He says malice, badness, or naughtiness, wickedness in general. Blaspheming, evil speaking, railings. Palabras deshonestas, uh, malicia. Filthy communications, vile conversations. Conversaciones malignas y uh, conversaciones uh, tontas. And then he says lying or deceit. John nos habla acerca del mentir. John will give us an outline of the types of sin that are in the world in 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17. 1 Juan capítulo 2. Uh, del versículo 16 en adelante nos da un bosquejo de aquellas cosas que están en el mundo. In that reading, John says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Nos dice ahí en ese uh, versículo, versículo 15, no améis al mundo ni las cosas que están en el mundo. Si alguno ama al mundo, el amor del Padre no está en él, porque todo lo que hay en el mundo, 
los deseos de la carne, los deseos de los ojos y la vanagloria de la vida no proviene del Padre, sino del mundo. Paul then will also list for us sins that we cannot have as a part of our lives as Christians in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. También Pablo nos enlista pecados que uh, no, debemos de, no deben de ser parte de nuestras vidas en Galatas capítulo 5, versículo 9. He says there, and now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, and such like, of the which I've told you before, as I've told you in times past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Así que en el versículo uh, 20 en adelante nos dice, uh, nos da una lista aquí que debemos uh, uh, alejarnos de ella. Idolatrías, hechicerías, amistades, uh, pleitos, todas estas cosas son los trabajos de la carne. The Christian is different. We're separate and apart from the way of the world. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Pueblo adquirido por Dios para que anuncies las virtudes de aquel que os llamó de las tinieblas a su luz admirable. A Christian has made the commitment to Christ through the obedience of the gospel. Un cristiano ha hecho, ha, ha cometido seguir a Cristo a través del Evangelio. The process of becoming a Christian has been stated as the plan of salvation and rightly so. El proceso de convertirse en cristiano se le ha llamado el plan de salvación y por algo bueno. So let's look at the plan of salvation just for a moment and think about what Christ has told us. We are to hear the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We are to believe the word of God, Mark chapter 16 and verse 16. Debemos de creer la palabra de Dios. Marcos 16, uh, 15. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. El que no creyera la, la palabra de Dios y fuera bautizado uh, va a ser condenado, pero el que creyere uh, será salvo. We are to repent of our sins, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Debemos de arrepentirnos de nuestros pecados, Hechos 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, that ye might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Pedro les dijo que se han de arrepentir y ser bautizados en nombre de Cristo, cada uno de ellos, y recibirán el, el don del Espíritu Santo. And then, confessing Jesus Christ as the Son of God, Acts chapter 8, verses 36 through 37. Hechos capítulo 8, versículo 36, en adelante, es la confesión. And they went on their way, and they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then one must be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of sin. First Peter chapter 3, verse 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll go ahead and finish. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. El bautismo que corresponde a esta hora nos salva, no quitando las inmundicias de la carne, sino como la aspiración de una buena conciencia hacia Dios para la resurrección o por la resurrección de Jesucristo. And then that last step that sometimes we almost overlook. El último paso que muchas veces nos olvida. To remain faithful while we have this life here upon this earth. Permanecer fieles mientras estamos aquí en esta vida. One of my favorite verses, Revelation 2 and verse 10, 
The latter part of that verse says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee the crown of life. So dice la última parte de este versículo que seamos fieles hasta la muerte y les daré la corona de la vida. We stay faithful by growing as Christians, both living the Christian life and striving to learn more about God's word. Crecemos al mantenernos fieles siguiendo la palabra de Dios y esforzándonos para hacer lo, lo, lo que nos dice Dios. We start off as babes in Christ, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. Empezamos como niños o bebés en Cristo, como nos dice 1 Pedro capítulo 2, versículo 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Como bebés que desean la leche pura para crecer. And then we grow through the study of the word, 2 Timothy 2.15. Luego también crecemos a través del estudio de la palabra, 2 Timoteo 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Mostrándonos a... Uh, adecuados a Dios, estudiando. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Un trabajador que no tiene de nada de que avergonzarse. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Que uh, trata correctamente la palabra de verdad. We continue that growth process all of our lives. And we want to look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. 2 Peter chapter 1, 4 through 8. Segundo de Pedro, capítulo 1, uh, 4 al 8. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promise that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, give all diligence to add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, temperance patience, and patience godliness, to, patience, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall never, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Añadiendo nuestra fe, tenemos que hacer eso. Según el Pedro, capítulo 2, versículo uh, 3 en adelante. Como todas las cosas que pertenecen a la vida en la piedad, versículo 4, por medio de las cuales nos ha dado preciosas y grandísimas promesas. Ahora, versículo 5, añadiendo, vosotros también poniendo toda diligencia por eso mismo, añadida vuestra fe y virtud, a la virtud conocimiento, al conocimiento dominio propio, al dominio propio paciencia, a la paciencia piedad, a la piedad afecto fraternal y al afecto fraternal amor, porque si esas cosas están en vosotros y abundan, no os dejarán estar ociosos ni sin fruto en cuanto al conocimiento de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. In this growth process, we lay up treasures for ourselves in heaven, as our Lord had commanded in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 2. En Mateo capítulo 6, versículo 2, si hacemos esto, estamos poniendo tesoros en el cielo. And so we go back to our command that was given by Paul in our text, seek those things which are above. Y regresamos al mandamiento que se nos dio a través de Pablo en nuestro texto de buscar aquellas cosas que están arriba. And if you'll drop down in Colossians chapter 3 to verse 16, he says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. La palabra de Cristo mora en abundancia en vosotros, enseñándoos y exhortándoos a unos a otros en toda sabiduría, cantando con gracia en vuestros corazones, al Señor con salmos e himnos y cánticos espirituales. We are to keep the word of God in us at all times. Debemos de mantener en nosotros la palabra de Dios en todo tiempo. Christ is our Savior and our only Savior. Cristo es nuestro Salvador y nuestro único Salvador. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Hechos uh, capítulo 4, versículo 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Nos dice aquí, y en ninguno otro hay salvación, porque no hay otro nombre bajo el cielo dado a los hombres en que podamos ser salvos. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 is used many times to explain the commanded song service that we have to the Lord. Muchas veces Colosenses 3, 16, se, se dice o se lee o se explica para explicar cómo debemos cantarle al Señor. In our song service, we sing based on Following the true scriptures. En nuestro cántico al Señor en adoración, uh, vamos a hacerlo siguiendo la verdad de la escritura. Because we sing praises to God and we teach each other. Por 
que cantamos oraciones a Dios, alabanzas a Dios, y también nos enseñamos los unos a los otros. Singing is not based on having a mechanical instrument or any, or any type of entertainment in our service to God. El cantar no está basado en utilizar instrumentos musicales o algún tipo de entretenimiento en nuestra adoración. Our song service is based on our conviction to Christ. Nuestros cánticos de adoración se basan en nuestra convicción a Cristo. We sing to teach each other and to praise the Lord. Cantamos para uh, enseñarnos los unos a los otros y alabar a nuestro Dios. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19, Paul says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Efesios capítulo 5, versículo 19, nos dice, hablando entre vosotros con salmos, con himnos y cánticos espirituales, cantando y alabando al Señor en vuestros corazones. This is a parallel verse to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Este es un pasaje paralelo a Colosenses 3, 16. And here we're told to make melody in our hearts. Y aquí se nos dice que debemos de hacer melodía en nuestros corazones. The Greek term used here for melody is salo. El término griego de aquí de hacer melodía se llama salo. The translation of the word salo does mean to pluck or to twang. La traducción de salo significa el calar uh, o uh, calar cuerda. But some have confused this uh, and said that it gives opening to having a mechanical instrument in our song service. Y muchos han confundido diciendo que esto nos da la autoridad de utilizar instrumentos musicales en nuestra adoración de cánticos. But that's not so. Pero eso no es correcto. Solo is defined, or by definition, must have an identifier as to what to pluck or to twang. Solo necesita una identificación de qué jalar o uh, cómo este, jalar cuerdas. ¿Cuáles son las cuerdas que debemos de jalar? In this case, it's our heart, our mind, our very being. Y estas cuerdas son nuestros corazones que debemos de tocar. We sing with joy in our hearts and we're plucking the heart string. Cantamos con alegría en nuestro corazón y tocamos las cuerdas de nuestro corazón. By command, we sing to each other and we praise God. Como mandamiento, cantamos los unos a los otros y adoramos a Dios. No mechanical instrument can be used in the commanded song service to God. No podemos utilizar ningún instrumento musical en la adoración a nuestro Dios. Paul also said in Colossians 3 and verse 17, También Pablo dice en Colosenses 3, 17, Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, <coughs> our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God <coughs> and the Father by him. Y todo lo que hacéis sea de palabra o de hecho, hacedlo todo en el nombre del Señor Jesús, dando gracias a Dios Padre por medio de él. We do all things through the name of Jesus. Todo lo hacemos en el nombre de Jesús. We live as true Christians, and that is to be Christ-like. Vivimos como verdaderos cristianos, y eso significa ser como Cristo. We should have an active prayer life, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, nos dice que debemos de vivir una vida de oración activa. Pray without ceasing. De, debemos de orar sin cesar. This is a direct communication to God the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. Esta es la directa comunicación que tenemos con Dios a través de el Señor Jesucristo. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, in 1 Juan chapter 2, versículo 1 al 2, John says, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Hijitos míos, estas cosas os escribo para que no pequéis, y si alguno hubiere pecado... Abogado tenemos para con el Padre a Jesucristo el justo. Y era la propiciación por nuestros pecados y no solamente por los nuestros, sino también por los de todo el mundo. What a great thing it is to have the opportunity to speak to the creator of all things. Qué grande cosa es que tenemos este privilegio de poder a conversar con el creador de todas las cosas. Colossians 3:16 do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Colosenses capítulo 3, 17 nos dice que debemos de hacer todo en el nombre de Jesús. We are to be seen as Christians before the world. Debemos de ser visto como cristianos en el mundo. It's more than just saying I'm a Christian. We have to live the Christian life. 
Debemos de ser más que decir que somos cristianos, pero debemos de vivir como cristianos. Christ commanded us in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Cristo nos mandó en Juan 14, 15, que si lo amamos, debemos de seguir sus mandamientos. Christ also told us in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. También Cristo nos dijo en Mateo capítulo 7, 21 al 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. No todo el que me dice, Señor, Señor, entrará en el reino de los cielos, sino el que me hace la voluntad de mi Padre que está en los cielos. Muchos me dirán en aquel día, Señor, Señor, no profetizamos en tu nombre, y en tu nombre echamos fuera demonios, y en tu nombre hicimos muchos milagros, y entonces les declararé, nunca os conocí, apartados de mí, hacedores de maldad. We need to follow the direction of Christ so that we can know that heaven is waiting for us. Debemos de seguir la dirección de Cristo para poder saber que el cielo está esperándonos. As our eternal home. Como nuestro hogar eterno. Brother Chris had uh, used this verse earlier today. And I want to go to it and I want us to open the book and I want us to look deep into what Paul says. Second Timothy 4 verses 6 through 8. I think this is one of the most beautiful verses that Paul writes for us. Paul is writing at the very end of his life. He's encouraged Timothy to take the work as his life will end very shortly. Then Paul looks at his life and the ending of his life. Pablo mira su propia vida y el final de su propia vida. And he has these great words to say that each of us as Christians should be able to say. Y dijo estas palabras que cada uno de nosotros como cristianos deberíamos de poder decir. He says, For I am now ready to be offered, and my time of departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that will love his appearing. Porque yo ya estoy para ser sacrificado, y el tiempo de mi partida está cercano. He peleado la buena batalla, he acabado la carrera, he guardado la fe. Por lo demás, no está guardada la corona de justicia, la cual me dará el Señor juez justo en aquel día, y no solo a mí, sino también a todos los que aman su venida. So we each need to ask ourselves, so, cada uno debemos de preguntarnos a nosotros mismos, are we able to repeat those words for ourselves? Podemos decir esas mismas palabras para nosotros mismos. Will we love the appearing of Christ? Amaremos la venida de nuestro Señor? Are we ready for our lives to end here upon this earth? Estamos listos para que nuestras vidas se acaben aquí en la tierra. Do we know heaven is waiting for us? Que el cielo está para we must heed the call of Christ. De hacer el de As Paul had said, seek those things which are above. Como Pablo dijo, cosas que están And so this afternoon, Así que esta tarde, if there are those here si hay de aquí, that need to respond to the invitation of Christ, to be baptized and have your sins washed away. De ser y la de sus Or maybe there's something that has separated you away from God. O tal vez hay algo que te de and you need the prayers of brothers and sisters in Christ. Y las de y en We have a love for each and every Christian. Un amor para cada uno de los and we want to pray with you and for you. Y So if you need to respond to his invitation, won't you respond as together we stand and sing?
Kevin. That was a uh, wonderful, thought-provoking lesson. Una buena lección que nos hizo pensar. I believe each lesson thus far has been hopefully beneficial. Creo que cada lección ha sido, espero, beneficial. And I do believe they have been. Yo creo que sí lo han hecho. I want to take a moment, even though we've got another three lessons tomorrow. Vamos a tomar un momento ya que tenemos este, más lecciones mañana. But I know we have some who will be at their home congregations tomorrow. Pero yo sé que van a estar muchos que van a estar en sus congregaciones mañana. And so I just wanted to say a couple of things this afternoon. Así que quiero decir algunas cosas con esta tarde. I want to thank, of course, God for his word and, and the opportunity that we have um, to study his word. Darle gracias a Dios primeramente por... Uh, su palabra y la oportunidad que tenemos de estudiarla. I think it was Chris that commented that uh, what would be better than spending a Saturday studying God's word with brothers. Creo que dijo uh, nuestro hermano Chris que qué es mejor que pasar el tiempo junto con nuestros hermanos y hermanas en Cristo estudiando su palabra. And indeed that is true. Y de hecho es verdad. I want to thank the congregation that uh, for continuing to support this work and and support everything done with it. I believe our lectureship is is a uh, valuable tool. I want to thank each speaker. I know most of them aren't here at this point, but if they watch, thanks. Por el trabajo que hicieron y gracias. And I want to, and I hate to single anybody out, but I want to say a special thanks to both uh, Christian and Salvador. Quiero dar gracias a Salvador por la traducción. Uh, because uh, both of them are speaking Christian twice. 
Still growing council. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, they are um, they are uh, also translating their own lessons, obviously, but also everybody else's, and so the two of them are putting in a lot of work. And you don't have to translate that at all, but you'll let everybody. I um, also want to thank Olivia over here. She'll get upset with me for singling her out, but I, I appreciate her for uh, her help with the lectureship. Gracias, Olivia, por el trabajo que está haciendo con esas conferencias. She's been turning on the, the camera and, and all of that, and also selling the books, which she really is, uh, and she really is adamant on trying to sell the book. Ella está aprendiendo la cámara y también quiere vender los libros. She's liable to catch you before you leave and try to sell you books again. Te va a agarrar, así que cuando van a la salida te va a vender un libro. And of course there are many others who, who I know I'm, I'm going to leave out. Obviamente hay muchos otros que no voy a poder mencionar. I do want to thank the Castanon family for all they've been doing during the lectureship. They provided refreshments both Thursday and Friday, and they were very good refreshments. Ellos han proveído refrigerios este a los dos días pasados y fueron excelentes. And and so much more that they do. Mucho más que ellos hacen. And I know that they'll they'll all say the glory is God. Y yo sé que van a decir que la gloria es para Dios. And, and that is that is true with with all of this. The glory is God. Yes, es verdad con todo lo que hacemos. Um, for those who won't be here tomorrow, I, I'm already working on the lectureship for next year, and I'll just kind of tell you. I'll mention it again for those who are here. But our lectureship next year is going to be on the preacher epistles. I'm going to call them. El tema de las siguientes conferencias van a ser las epístolas de. Los predicadores. I know most call them the pastoral epistles, but I, I, I just, I refuse to call them that because I, I don't think that's, that's the correct way of describing it. They weren't pastors, they were preachers. Así que se rehúsa utilizar las epístolas pastorales uh, por la connotación negativa, pero uh, se les va a llamar las uh, epístolas del predicadores. And I'm already excited about that that lectureship for next year. Yeah, so emocionado para esas lecturas. Um, we're going to ask Brother Salvador to come up and lead us in a closing prayer, because he has not done enough, and we'll be dismissed. Mr. Brother Salvador nos va a dirigir una oración para cerrar, porque no ha hecho lo suficiente aparentemente. Amen. Vamos a orar. Glorioso Padre Celestial, gracias por las grandes bendiciones que usted nos ha dado hasta el día de hoy y poder llegar hasta este momento. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings you have given us up until this moment, and, and we want to thank you for uh, letting us arrive until, until this precise moment. Le pedimos que usted nos, nos guíe y nos cuide en el camino de regreso a casa y, y nos lleve con felicidad y con bienestar hasta hacia nuestros hogares para que podamos así también prepararnos para el día de mañana y alabar su santo nombre. We ask you, Lord, to please uh, take care of us in our, in our way home and, uh, and take us safely and, and so that we can uh, get home and prepare for tomorrow uh, for your worship. Te agradecemos todo esto en nombre de tu Hijo Cristo Jesús. We thank you for all of this in, in our Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.